everybody. Welcome to the Tech Raptor Podcast. I'm Robert Scarpanito, your features editor. And Rotten, editor-in-chief. Rutledge Doggett, site founder. Andrew Stritch, drumming editor? Drumming editor, mm-hmm. indeed. Okay, we're not going to talk about the game that you were drumming about, so you just want to mention it now so your drumming editor yeah, makes the, sense. Yeah, the or... Taiku, Taiku no Tatsujin game on Game Pass. Uh, pretty fun. They just dropped DLC that has a, a couple of Spirited Away songs. Um, so I've been rocking out to that. I feel yeah, like this is just you trying to talk about Game Pass. Oh yeah, I mean we got it. We got it in like sub one minute. I think that might be a record for us. It's, like, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. It's You've like... got to be the only one that uses a Game Pass this way. You're like, I play literally everything. <laughs> yeah, most things when they hit Game Pass, I will play. Now that they can do like the cloud play thing as well, I don't even need to wait for them to to install. Yeah. I'll just we like to, go and spend two hours in the game so you can and move be in on. the commercial. I played that Ben <laughs> Ten is... game that dropped. I, like, I'm it sure was fun. Did. It was okay. I moved on. Dear Phil hey. Spencer, he's right here. Yeah, no, I, I just got a text from Phil. He said checks in the mail. So he, no, he yeah, said, no, he said my... tone it down. No one's gonna believe that anybody's <laughs> actually like this. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, buddy, you're coming on too strong. <laughs> too strong. Yeah, I gotta be realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this week, we're going to talk about a few big games this week, like Horizon Forbidden West again, and also uh, this indie gem called Elden Ring you might have heard of. Uh, but first, let's get into some news. Square Enix continues to have impossibly high standards for its games, calling Guardians of the Galaxy a uh, disappointment when it comes to its sales, uh, which kind of makes us a little sad because, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy was, uh, if you didn't know, the Tech Raptor game of the year for 2021. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of nuts to see this from Squeenix because I mean they've done this before. Like they called that first Tomb Raider reboot a uh, uh, commercial failure, right? Or along those lines, where they were disappointed with its sales as well, even though it sold like I don't know three and a half mil, like pretty well, early yeah, the on. The time right? like that report came out, it was at like seven or eight million. That was extra crazy. It's like so. What were yeah. you expecting? Like, <laughs> I mean, when <laughs> that's crazy amount. When what do you have to compare that to? And like the benchmark that you can compare that to is final fantasy 7 when that came out or you know the crazy numbers that final fantasy 14 is doing it's mm-hmm. it's understandable comparable but it's like you know saying well this game isn't as good as that game but like you've given a 9 to one game and an 8.8 to another <laughs> game it's yeah like, it's all impressive numbers compared to the the scale of what final fantasy 7 took in it's probably a drop in the bucket, but <laughs> still good. Yeah, I mean, you're fighting established series, too. Like, Final Fantasy fourteen, they literally had to shut down sales of the game. Like, you're not going to be able to do no. that with a single-player game. Like, yeah. You're not going to hit those numbers. And Final Fantasy seven had this has this long-established history that had everybody hyped about it. And then, you know, Guardians kind of comes uh, after the Avengers game that kind of flops. Yeah. So Pete, that's yeah. what a lot of people were expecting. That's what I was expecting was that it was going to be like that. And, you know, once Otten started talking about it on one of our early podcasts, like he was like, oh shit, I need to, I need to play this. Yeah, uh, that was the same for me, right? And I think I, I know it's a little unfair to compare Avengers to Guardians because it's, it's, you know, two separate like development studios, right? Yep. If I remember right, but yep. You know, there's there's just something about like, oh, it's another Marvel game from being published it, by Square Enix, yeah. right? You just you kind of your brain connects it, and you're like, oh, Guardians might not be as good. Yeah, Marvel's but, Avengers definitely like damaged it. It damaged the perception, um, yeah, which is definitely not did. what you want to do with um, one of Big Daddy Disney's properties. <laughs> it's kind of like a very Square Enix thing to do with Marvel, like Avengers, as they're very infamous for. Um like spending a ton of money on an engine or something and then never using it yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like making it for a game and mean? then putting the, a the teaser luminous out. engine was perfect there's no complaints <laughs> yeah. with the luminous engine uh, so like they do this stuff for the games all the time and i can't remember i was re- i wish i i had prepared better and got the news piece um there was stuff about the avengers budget just being insane mm. and that they tried some stuff and a lot of bloat and stuff got changed like they just spent pumped a ton of money into it and time it obviously didn't pay off. <laughs> right. Um, but I, I really am curious where they where they set their target goals. We don't know what they are. And we don't even know what Marvel sold, what, what Guardians of the Galaxy sold. We have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd be curious what, their, what the level was for profitability if they passed it. 
Because to me, that's a success, right? You made money off the game. You're still making money off the game. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be disappointed about that, but... Yeah, I mean, I think part of it, right, was the narrative that, like, right, you touched on earlier where, you know, we all were thinking, I don't know, this will be good until one person on the podcast said, oh, it's actually good. And I feel like that was the larger narrative across the the industry where, like, mm -hmm. the reviews came out. Suddenly it's like eights, nines, right? And everyone's like, whoa, this is like a sleeper hit. But maybe it wasn't a sleeper hit enough for enough people to go out there and buy it, you know, yeah. or, like, play it themselves. I, I'm, I really think if there's one aspect of the game that could have been improved, um, it's just that all the characters were far too quiet. They definitely didn't <laughs> speak with each other enough. No, mm -hmm. no. Um, and I just feel like that could have really contributed to the, to the overall cohesion of the group if they just, yeah. you know, had a, spent a spent some time talking with each other. Mm -hmm. hmm. yep. So I was curious, and I looked up the the Tomb Raider. It was uh, its first month. The Tomb Raider reboot sold about three and a half million units, and right. that was a, that was a disappointing number to Square. That's like, dude, it's three and a half million units to a Tears they haven't seen in a while. That's totally different than what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it makes me wonder if Guardians is maybe of a similar scale, or maybe like maximum it could have sold is possibly three and a half million in the first month or something. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, if, I don't know. It's, yeah, but then obviously they they went on to make two more Tomb Raider games. So mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so out. I mean, there there could be a Guardians of the Galaxy two. Like I, the video God, I game. hope so. That was fun right. though. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I feel like the, the way the first game ends, I mean, no spoilers, obviously, but the way it ends, yeah. I think it leaves the door open for like, if they wanted to continue, there is yeah. room for that. I'm, I'm down just to screw around and have them not talk enough around me. Mm -hmm. I want it completely silent. No, yeah. no subtitles, no audio, just silent What's the film. next game? They only talk Groot. <laughs> Everyone learns to <laughs> Groot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Instead of like it. PAL 5 or like PAL 3, it's PAL 6 and Groot is one of the options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's it's just a shame to see this coming from Squeenix. Just, you know, I feel like this, it's almost been a consistent thing with their history now. Like mm -hmm. with these really big, like Western developed games, right? Like, yep. You, you never hear this about their Japanese side, mm -mm. Japan side. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually, like, does anyone know offhand how much, uh, how many sales Final Fantasy VII Remake made? Ah, uh, it's gotta be an absurd amount. It's gotta be a lot. Well, see, I'm wondering that, right? Because it, at first it was a PS4 exclusive. So, just by, you know, law of large numbers, right? Like, you've, that's, like, so many less potential uh, customers. According to Statista.com, uh, apparently in its opening weekend... Final Fantasy VII Remake approximately had 3.5 million sales. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so in a week, it did what Tomb Raider did in a month. Um, and then Square Enix announced in October, so April. So what, six so months? Six, yeah, in the first six months, um, Square Enix announced that it had surpassed five, minute, five million units That's shipped oh, worldwide. That's not that And much. that figure includes digital sales. Hmm. Huh. So that's actually not that much. Yeah, uh, I mean now it's, now it's on PC and PS5 yeah. with that intermission or whatever that integrate. It was also um, PlayStation Plus, right? Uh, right. That that was like a few months before the PS5 version, right? Because they had that thing where if you get it via PS yeah. Plus, you can't freely upgrade to PS5. Yeah, yeah that, that bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Classic. Hey, they uh, haven't said anything about sales since august of 2020 yeah, it was the fastest selling final fantasy title in the franchise's history and the previous one before that was 15 so really yeah. just they continue to get bigger <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah last price right and i mean like final fantasy 14 continue like that also continues to get bigger right like i think the last number i saw was 25 mil users jesus something yeah and well, they just uh -huh. put like a 10 year roadmap and it's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> You know, my, my subscription for that renewed like last week and I, I still haven't touched it in months, but you know what? I'm just going to let that keep going at this point because eventually I'll get to it. Yeah. yeah. I just hope this doesn't mean that they shy away from doing stuff because they, do they and, have like, it seems like they have the Marvel license for like the big stuff. Nobody else is doing big Marvel games, other, I guess, other than Spider-Man. Right? Yeah. I mean, well, and the Wolverine, <laughs> Insomniac's Wolverine. No one else is doing something big. Looks over at Insomniac, who yeah. is consistently pumping out new content. I forgot, yeah. I forgot about Wolverine. 
That's right. But like, yeah. Spider-Man is different because it's its own Sony-owned thing. It's not in the mm-hmm. rest of Marvel stuff. But mm-hmm. I just hope they don't they keep doing stuff because Gar- Guardians was great. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and I like I said in my I review, I'm the one who reviewed it. I I genuinely think it's the best Marvel superhero game out there. Uh, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine for PlayStation Two. I was Boom. gonna say Marvel Spider Man, but that's a close second no. for me. <laughs> totally. No. <laughs> Not I'm, the yeah. Iron Man game. The VR one. No, the one that was like. <laughs> Early two thousands, I think. Although the, really, the one, yeah. Oh, yeah, the one that came out the with movie the movie tie-in. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to licensed video games? Why do we get them anymore? They're on mobile. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'm still looking forward to Spider Man too, though. Whatever oh, that's I'm coming. Not, like, I'm was that next year? I right? love them. Yeah. Spider Man's great. It's so fit, but I don't know. There's something about Marvel. It was just Guardians of the Galaxy. It was so. Yeah. I... <laughs> Games critics and journalists get shit on a lot for the it game. You really feel like you're Spider Man, or you feel like mm-hmm. you're Batman. You feel like stuff. a Star Lord. Yeah, well, it's just uh, I spent a little bit in that review talking about like Guardians was so good at, at just nailing the vibe of who the Guardians are, like not mm-hmm. just in who their characters and how they talk and all that stuff. Um, it's just so good at doing they, that. They they James gunnified it. Yeah, a bit. Rightly yeah. So. But I think Especially they did it better what, than after even he Avengers, did. there was so much backlash about how every character <laughs> looked like the off-brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still think Star-Lord in that game kind of looks like Troy Baker in a weird... I don't know why, but there's something about it's, it. It's the flicky hair. Yeah, that might be it. Because no one else still has that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, right? Oh, man. Yeah, I, I think that game is probably the closest feeling to like an MCU movie in video games mm-hmm. you know oh, it definitely. feels more like an mcu movie than like marvel spider-man for sure oh certainly yeah yeah um in other big news capcom has dropped wide ryu <laughs> street fighter 6 is happening god ryu's just so f- he's like a fucking truck dude he's like two yeah. pecs attached to ryu is the <laughs> is the idea here he reminds me of that really poorly done superman comic cover <laughs> the one where he's like simultaneously like facing away but also like his pecs. oh is that the, the captain america one i think oh is it captain america mm, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah there's that guy that, that like, forgot. he's a comic artist that's famous for doing that bullshit that, like a weirdly <laughs> so shifted dumb. upper torso image oh <laughs> creepy speaking of artists let's Great. talk about how good that logo is oh yeah that logo it's a hexagon with an sf in it and then a little modern. six at the bottom <laughs> modern and minimalist right isn't that what yeah. everybody's doing that's what that's everyone so loves. Weird. Taken straight from I, Adobe's uh, collections. Yeah, like the original artist who made there, there's something very similar in like Adobe stock uh, images where it, it's a hexagon with I forget what letters are inside it's it, but a, it's, a, it's it's SF. It's, it's SF. 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 Yeah. yeah, it's it's almost the exact <laughs> the, the same F logo. Is slightly different. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. like some barely like little different angles in the letters, and that's kind of yeah. it. That's the only that's difference. <laughs> And I think it's the same, like, there's a similar logo for, like, I think it's a French or German, like, sci-fi convention that uses a similar <laughs> logo, too, which is kind of nuts. Amazing. Would not I've, surprise me. Yeah, I've, one of my favorite takes us on Twitter, I forgot who said it, but they said, like, why does the SF logo look like you have six email notifications? It's <laughs> 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 just perfect. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> it, hey, is, it is such a shame. The <laughs> logos for Street Fighter up until now have been so great so stylized like the way that it shifted i mean for lack of a better comparison the the super mario no not super mario sorry um the street fighter logos have super mario strikers energy about them yeah like that cool like kind of warped shading to them and then you look at like the logo for six in comparison um and it it just looks wrong it doesn't even look like like if i looked at that logo in a void i wouldn't think that stands for street fighter yeah because yeah, there's, there's always like you said there's some some flair to their logos that just isn't there now yeah because i mean they do the brush strokes usually like with the i think of like i think it's sf4 or 5 right that's like the s and the f are brush strokey it's like the same yeah. logo that's in mm-hmm. like smash when you play as ryu mm-hmm. like his mm-hmm. his logo there is like oh it's so like that street fighter and even this 30 second teaser, like you see all the ink brush strokes that they've been doing since four all over, but then you see the logo and it's like, 
So I wonder if part what of is this, this is, um, so I don't know much about Street Fighter. And mm. you guys are going to laugh at me, but there's, so there is a story with Street Fighter. And it's my understanding that plot wise, because there is a plot. Yes. That um, that we've been, the, this plot hasn't moved forward since Third Strike, my friend was telling me, mm. which is, you know, 15 years ago or whatever now, if that came out or something. Um, and this takes place after that. So it's a much more modern timeline. And is that, is the logo to reflect that? I don't know. Is that I, the attempt to go with that vibe of like, okay, we've hit more modernity in some fashion and that everything's going to have this different little vibe to it? Hmm. I don't know. That's the only thing that kind of made sense to me. And I was like, I guess I could see if that's the line of thinking, but I don't know. My guess is that, you know, is how nice is that logo going to look up on a plasma screen next to Astro, next to uh, the Sony logo, next to the Evo logo. Mm. I think Maybe, it I just know. seems Street very logo looks pretty rad. sterile yeah. And, yeah. and marketing focused. So, I mean, even aside from like those Evo logos, imagine it like you go, like you're watching Evo next year and you see like Guilty Gear Strive, you see Tekken 7, and you see like all of these fighting games with these cool ass logos, right? And then Street Fighter 6, yeah. SF6, you know, it, it just looks so clean in a, in a boring way, yeah. right? Man. Street Fighter now with six notifications. Yeah, yes. exactly. I mean, I know fighting game stories are ridiculous, right? Like yeah. consistently ridiculous. Like Tech Tekken Seven, <laughs> the story. Oh my god! I can't. Yeah, I love Tekken lore so much. <laughs> Tekken lore is one of my favorite. I love how it starts with Heihachi throwing his son or his grandson off a cliff, and it comes full circle in Seven when his son, as now a demon devil thing, throws <laughs> throws his grandfather off a cliff. It's so stupid, and I imagine Street Fighter is probably similar because I know the the evil bad guy corporation is called Shadow Lou, which sounds just like a joke. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sounds like TMNT levels, like oh, the hand organization. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. um, but no, I'm I'm hoping Street Fighter Six is at least more fun than the logo implies. Like, I think this is going to be developed in the RE engine, right? Which, like, I don't think there's been a bad game on the RE engine yet. Like, yeah, closest like, maybe Resident Evil Three remake. The but, uh, yeah. so there's been a lot. Obviously, a lot of people been dunking on the logo on social media and stuff and is it a small time thing really yet yeah, does it matter not really like doesn't matter a whole bunch mm -hmm. i'm sure street fire 6 is going to be fantastic for people i can't imagine like, for, like it, one of the a frustrating things that is I that I, I i know about a little bit about street like fighting games it's like they all almost all the big ones like yeah they all review extremely well and it's like so what's a bad one <laughs> you know what i mean like everybody's like uh, oh it's, it's so amazing at doing this do you think five have a whole bunch of issues? Yeah, five. Five People launched. Really weren't a fan of launch five. Launch was not yeah. good. It launched pretty horribly, and I think Capcom knows they can't afford for Street Fighter Six to launch horribly as well. Because if it does, I mean, like even today, like when you compare Street Fighter today, the modern like moment, to you know like Street Fighter Two, Super Street Fighter Two, like its heyday, like. Street Fighter was synonymous with fighting games back in the day, right? Like if you if you said, "Oh, I play fighting games," everyone's like, "Oh, who's your main in Street Fighter?" Right? Like it yeah. was the game. Now it doesn't have that same pedigree. I feel like, and part of it is partially due to like Street Fighter V's kind of rough start. Like now it's a good game because you know years of patches, right? But Street Fighter Six is going to be a whole new clean slate. Mm -hmm. well, I'm I'm wondering, you know, in in how little information we have. I'm wondering whether six will continue the trend and be a PlayStation and PC exclusive. Man, uh, man. Whether that's going to continue to to not appear on the Xbox platform. I kind of wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, yeah. especially Evo. Like, it's so closely tied to what Evo is, right? Like, and yeah. with Sony owning Evo, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, like at this point, PlayStation just kind of feels like the fighting game console, you know? Well, that, that Capcom has been like probably the... Which is weird because the PlayStation 5 does not have two forward-facing USB plugs. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which then kind of fucks over people trying to play with uh, with fight sticks, unless I guess they're going to probably start releasing USB-C fight sticks. Mm. Yeah, Because you've got a USB-C and a Type-A on the front. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and then there's, uh, I think Capcom's been one of the most consistently rumored potential buys for Sony. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Um, going around. I mean, who knows, like, the reality of that? No idea. But it's been said a lot. Hmm. So who knows? Uh, Capcom Capcom still does so much that is like so heavy Nintendo focused. Yeah. Um, that I just every single time I hear that rumor, <laughs> so it's kind of like, weird. Well, what are they just going to stop doing everything that they're doing on Switch? Uh, and like, like that's they, huge. They kind of do all their all their Capcom is one of those weird companies that people don't talk about enough. In terms of like they kind of knock almost everything out of the park lately. Like they've been on yeah. a fucking roll. Like <laughs> they've been doing everything amazingly well. Uh, this like last decade ish mostly. Mm-hmm um yeah like all of their big franchises are like just knocking it like resident evil is better than it's ever been even like better than four like four was really good but we're just kind of in this like heyday of resident like it's a renaissance for resident evil yeah that's pretty crazy well i mean and they just released four re-released four as well anyway Mm -hmm. well they well yeah it's true and they might be remaking it right like isn't that like a consistent Mm -hmm. rumor rumor, i mean they've been remaking all the other ones so they've done two and they've done three it would make sense if they did four Speaking right. of re-releases, also announced that Street Fighter Six is the that um, collection like fighting of fighting collection. games. Yeah, which I know for some people are pretty rad because it's uh, what there's two games that never made it to the West, some Darkstalker games, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then also Street Fighter Two's on there. Cause, so we we joke about games that get have been remade and reported. Like every jokes about Skyrim, but it's, it's, Street Fighter Two's got to have the actual title <laughs> for that. They've it's got to yeah. have the real king. Like other than Tetris, like Street Fighter Two is on everything, and it's yeah. so many different versions. And like, there's like Super Street Fighter, Turbo Street Fighter, fucking. You know, uh, like, now this is the yeah. uh, like anniversary edition, and it's like what the fuck. Super like, Street Fighter Two Hyper EX Turbo Alpha Plus. Yeah, I would believe I, that's real. Fit. <laughs> I just had a. Uh, what was the zombie game? Resident Evil. Left no. Dead. Oh. No, the the dumb. I've covered wars, you know. Dead Rising oh, it was the the Dead Rising three DLC that was some name making fun of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, even though it has been ported a lot, like, there's something to be said about how iconic the Street Fighter two like character oh, yeah, select yeah. screen is, just, right? Like, like just, just the character select screen is. People yeah. always like to joke about Skyrim, and it's like, dude, Street Fighter two's been doing it for thirty something years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm honestly on my end because I think I'm maybe the one on this pod that plays the most fighting games and I'm like barely not oh, e- I'm sure, not even I'm close sure. to an expert like <laughs> not even a little. Yeah. Um, but I hope SF6 is pretty good because I've tried SF4 and 5 and there's something about it that I just it doesn't click with me. Like I respect how good of a game Street Fighter is. Like obviously it has that history, right? But I'm hoping maybe I can jump in on 6 and feel like okay, let's let's try to learn this from the ground yeah. up like everyone else, you know, like start at the same starting line kind of a thing. For my I don't know a ton either, but I have a friend who's way into it and I was talking to him about it when it was released and kind of what he was getting at is if it's going to be more in that third strike kind of vibe and sort of that's where it's building off of and that's where it's going to next. Um, Street Fighter Five was like a little more old school, and this could have just a lot more weird stuff going on um, mechanically. Mm-hmm. So maybe that'll make it more interesting. Because I know like other fighting games got just some wild shit happening oh, yeah. all the time, and Street Fighter Five didn't really doesn't really have that, that as much. It's definitely more of a classic like co- combo and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah. And they also announced right at that that Capcom event that they're making some magic cards with. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, they're doing Street some Fighter Street Fighter magic thing. Yeah, like I think it's just like reprints of old cards, but then with like new art or like crossover art. Yeah. So I mean, that's cool. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. it, it was a better win for Street Fighter Six and. Do we think that we might see a Planeswalker as a DLC character for Street Fighter VI? <laughs> That'd be cool. How, how sure. wild that would that be? That'd be, be crazy. Kind of awesome. Get, yeah, let's Not put... only that, they write it into the story somehow. <laughs> Yo, actually, though, what if what if they do that with a Tekken character? Because they wrote Akuma into Tekken 7. Like, he is not just a guest character. Yeah, He's, like, true. part of the story. Like, he tries to kill the people in the story. Like, kill, I think, <laughs> Kazuya in the story, right? Something like that. Um... <laughs> So what if they bring in like, and then Kazuya's in, te- in te- uh, Street Fighter, you know? 
Well, revenge. Because they did revenge. Street Fighter X Tekken ages ago. Yeah. And then they were meant to do a Tekken X Street Fighter. I was waiting so long for that. I'm such like more of a Tekken player than I am a than I am a Street Fighter player. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, that's cool that, you know, you can play as Tekken people in a street fighter world, but you know, I want to be playing in the play style I prefer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it just never happened. I was very sad. Well, we might get a Tekken eight. That could be the closest thing you'll get. Maybe. I mean, at this point, like yeah. Tekken seven has been what around since 2015, like it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. That's true. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how much staying power a lot of fighting games have. Yeah. So I was just thinking about that. It's like Street Fighters existed this long and we're only getting to six. Obviously, there's been many, many other yeah. weird versions in between the mainline ones. Right. But it's just like, huh. It's kind of crazy. I mean, there yeah. hasn't even been that many Tekken variants. I guess there was Tekken Tag. Yeah, Tekken Tag. Yeah. And there was like Tekken 6 Dark Retribution or something like that, which was like a half side DLC or some or side expansion thing. I don't remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Tekken's always kind of like stayed the course with mainly being the mainline series, you know? It is. It has definitely changed the least since yes. Origin. Well, sorry. I'm saying that as a person who plays it casually for fun, I'm sure that you know, someone really into tech and can absolutely tell me how that statement is completely incorrect. I am bad and that I should feel bad. Yeah. Uh, how dare you not know the uh, grand implications of the added wall splat bounce from Tekken 7 <laughs> Season 2, which is a real thing, by the way. It really I think. shifted like, the meta. Yeah, yeah kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it, I think it did. Um, but I think that's it for news. Let's talk about the games that we've been playing. Otten, do you want to kick off with your thoughts on Horizon Forbidden West? Because I talked about it last week, and I'm curious what you're thinking of it so far. Sure. Uh, it's more Horizon. Um, <laughs> That's it. That's the tweet. Thank you. The okay. uh, What's weird is I saw a lot of people saying that like a, a, it's a bad thing, and I'm like, is it? This seems like a weird thing for this to get a bad rap for. It's like, that's every sequel. Like, ugh. What's this Mario game more about platforming? What the fuck? Like, I mean, we were just talking about fighting games that haven't changed. Yeah, that's since. what I mean. Yeah. And it's like, what are you what are you complaining about? Like, it's got the base formula that's there. That's all sequels or that. So it's such a weird complaint to me. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, there's they've added some stuff. Um, it's kind of wild how they just throw all the weapons at you like immediately. Like you just have these tools like almost right away. Mm. Um, and you're like, oh shit. Okay, I guess I have all this to think about. And how there's seem to be a lot more um, uh, variations of them and things that you can you can have. I'm not that far into it. And I imagine that it, by at some point I'm going to have like 30 fucking weapons that I could put on my weapon wheel at some point. I'm imagining because mm -hmm. there's so many things out there, which is kind of cool. Um, I think that the 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 machine fighting is feels a lot more dynamic. Uh, they feel like they they're definitely out to get me a lot better. <laughs> like they they're it's harder. <laughs> Uh, it's a little more fun because of that. Um, and I, I am blown away by how fucking gorgeous that game looks. On, oh, it's, yeah. It's absurd. On PS5, it's wild to me. Mm -hmm. um, like, I saw some stuff before it came out where some of the Digital Foundry folks were talking about the water. And it seems, like, so weird. Water is one of those things. If anybody that's into, like, the graphics of games, like, well, everybody's like, oh, man, you got to we're talking about the water wait till it gets good water like everybody's like water water fish but AI. Like... <laughs> that's the hardest yeah. thing to, to create really. yeah that, that was one of the best call of duty things ever look at the fish react <laughs> <laughs> anyway but like horizons like the fucking water and that looks real it's crazy mm -hmm. that's easily the best I mean, it's it blew me it's so surprising anyway but it's all it's gorgeous like just running around the world I love the look of it. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, if it's you like pretty. Horizon, you're gonna like. I don't know what people are. Um, I mean, yeah, that like, can be I, that can definitely be great. a good thing. Um, yeah, and especially when marketed for it, it's like, yeah, if you like it, it's a sure bet I that think, you're gonna like um, this too. I think what it gets some rap for is it's it's a it's an extremely safe, well trod genre and game. We know the formula. We've played mm -hmm. it now forever. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really do a lot new. Um, 
I, I guess the only thing that would be new-ish or like it's unique thing, obviously, is the machines and how you fight them and you know blowing bits off of them and et cetera, stuff like that. But it's it's a well-known equation that we've all been. I mean, that that worked well for with. Pokemon for twenty years too. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, it's it's just I guess you, I can see why some people formula, wouldn't then wouldn't you be should, as you, could, you can be allowed to stick with it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I it's just I think we've seen it in so many other games as part of it. Is, yeah, uh, it's it's been with us for so long, and that was one of my. I think I mentioned that in the last week. It was one of my worries. Was like, okay, that open world fatigue. Like, is that really going to start setting in? Because it's definitely been setting in with other stuff I played. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> there's another point thing over here to look at. I guess. Okay, like, <laughs> can can I ask how far into it are you? Um, what's the place I just got to? Um, the main menu. I just booted it up. Yeah, I hit I, I hit start on the... my dual sense and an achievement popped and mm-hmm. can't remember the name of it. Uh, I I haven't done as much of the story. I I definitely fuck around and do stuff outside of it. Uh, but I mean, it's open world. I'm in the open world. But I'm past the gate and everything. Oh, past um, that embassy. Yeah. Okay. So I'm beyond that. Um, where it opens up and you yeah you have a lot more freedom to roam around. How did you find the tutorial? I heard that that was quite lengthy um so that i i guess up until the embassy is kind of tutorially mm-hmm. in a way uh there wasn't it wasn't a lot of like stopping you and like here you must do this and go through this menu to move on like that it was over very approach quickly. a plant and press a yeah now that... open your crafting <laughs> menu it wasn't a nintendo game i'll say <laughs> It, no hand uh, holding that's good yeah it, it you can get right into it and you could totally just be like no i'm not gonna follow what you tell me i'm gonna go look over here at this thing yeah instead um you could mm-hmm. definitely do that um but i mean it's it's good good fun i i think that's its biggest knock because it's not really innovative or anything it's it, it your mileage is going to vary in terms of how much you like the world and the mechanics of fighting and machines because otherwise it is all stuff we know. Clearing out camps of people, that's been around yeah. forever. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm landing on it, is that it, there's a lot of stuff that, like, it, moment to moment is pretty fun, right? Yep. But then you run into, like, so many, like, just open world tropes yep. that, you know, it's just kind of exhausting. Like, I remember, I think last week, I was I said I was already exhausted by the thought of all the side quests that will be in this game. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've done quite a few of them now and I think some of the side quests are pretty well written and there's like they're interesting enough where you're like you can get a little invested in them but they're mm-hmm. not like the whole thing but I don't know if it's enough for me to be like uh, I want to do all of the side quests you know yeah uh, it's, um, I'm definitely I really like the lore in the world of Horizon I did. I thought they did that a really really well in the first game Um but part of my worry when I was going into this one, I was like, okay, part of what was so great about it was that you're piecing together a mystery you don't know anything about. And now that the cat's out of the bag, that's a very different kind of story you have to tell now. Like, how are they going to keep me involved in that now? Because it's like uh, so much of it is why is the world the way it's in is the big question, right, for Horizon mm-hmm. in the first game. And you kind of learn why. And you're like, oh, shit. And they do, they, to me, they, they, they twisted some tropes that are well-known in sci-fi that made it interesting. Um, and so now it's, they have to grow through the story after that. It's like, there hasn't really been a hook yet other than, you know, silence fucked you over. So you got to figure out what the hell's going on with him. Um, um so I will see. Depending where you are on the main quest, you're f- probably pretty close to the hook. Okay. Cause I haven't, I haven't I'll tell you that. been doing it as much of the main quest. We're doing other stuff mm-hmm. running around. Uh, the, the, I will say the side quests I have played are definitely better than the first game. Yeah. So first game side quest fucking sucked. That was by far <laughs> the worst part of the game. Easily the worst part of the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, here they feel a little more like there's nothing more going on. Justified, yeah. Yeah, and they're they're they add, like. Well, I hate talk about side quests is weird because it's they're always we kind of all there. There's a stable of questions they kind of ask of like moral quandaries and whatever and we kind of just see it in a different the diff flavor for this game over and over again we see the same kind of crap mm-hmm. um so they seem to be doing that just in a, in a good way 
like like you said in a pretty well crafted way. Um, and so that, that's what's so hard about talking about this game is that there's, it doesn't do anything new, but it does stuff well. Like there's nothing wrong with doing something that's very tropey or very well known or very formulaic. And if it's executed very well, you don't need to necessarily be doing something extremely new every time. Like when I wrote the our Witcher three review, I think I ended that with saying. It's not innovative in any way. And I still stand by that. It didn't innovate anything. It just perfected what we thought of open world being at that time. Mm -hmm. And did it in such a crazy well way. And that's that's how I kind of feel about Horizon. I, I still think Witcher is probably better. Uh, better writing, anyway. Um, but it's something that's done really well, and I think people will enjoy it. Uh, the world's very big. I'm, I'm glad that when I did the first tall neck, it seemed to open up a, quite a bit of the map, so I don't have to do like 50 of those fuckers. So. I think there's only seven Good, tall necks like, in the I world. Think it's, it's, and there, actually, in the first one, there wasn't that many either. There wasn't a ton. Mm -hmm. um, but like people talk about the Ubisoft games or like the towers. Yeah. And there's <laughs> if there's only a few, and I always found that, I don't know, there's a certain majesty that they give the tall necks that it was always kind of neat to figure out how to get up, like crawl up one or figure out how you get on top of it. Yeah, they're like a puzzle they, almost. Yeah, they made it interesting. I think that was the the way to go if you're going to have that mechanic. Um, they they did it pretty well, but I, I'm enjoying it. I, if you like the first one, I can't imagine people not liking this. And gen and then honestly, if people haven't played Horizon, I find it hard to believe you're not going to find some enjoyment out of it because it's just it's well trod path that we know works because these <laughs> games sell extremely well all the time, <laughs> and it's another one of those done right. really well so right yeah i think what i what i am liking about the narrative so far is uh because you know in the first game i got to meridian and i was like okay i'm i'm, I'm done <laughs> yeah and i don't right remember interesting <laughs> yeah i don't remember what point or like how many hours it took me to get to meridian but i knew i was like i am i am sick of this open world yeah. i am i got it i am good let's move on um so I feel like obviously I missed out on like all of the narrative hooks, right? Like uh -huh. the, the stuff I learned in the first five minutes of this new game. Yeah, right? yeah. They, they and there's a lot more that, that that didn't cover, right? And I think this uh, Horizon Forbidden West, I think, gets to its hook mm -hmm. a lot quicker. Like now that it's established, like okay, here's all the spoiler stuff from the first game, and then you're like, okay, so the way that's set up is essentially it feels like okay, you kind of from the beginning know what you have to do and know what your your grand quest is right yeah so i wasn't really expecting much of like the uh, a new hook just more of a like let's get to the destination kind of mm -hmm. journey um but they they will throw in some things that will be like oh that's i'm looking forward to surprising. it I'm gonna, yes i'm gonna make sure to i guess i'll make sure to do a couple of the main quest stuff just to move on and see what's up mm -hmm. yeah i'd be curious to, to, to see what your thoughts are for for when huh. they um they do the big change. Like I'm not guessing this yeah. must be the big hook happens when you go meet the like clan leader, the tribe leader, as my guess. Um, mm, no. Well, maybe okay. I haven't done that part yet. But there's something I I won't. You know, you'll find out. Are you talking about you'll, right after? Are you talking about when you do the embassy? No, 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 no. It, it's it's okay. further into the open betrayed? world. Okay. No, no. Now, as not someone that. who as someone who you know barely played the first one has no has no intentions to play this one watching you two try to avoid spoil. every spoiler possible <laughs> while also trying to 100 percent indicate to one another where you guys are in the story and what a plot hook may or may not be is fascinating to watch it's, it's when cloud strife shows up <laughs> oh yeah dude no, it, it's oh. it's when it's when you finally get the backup because you know you've been trying to get the backup since the beginning of the game yeah, it's when yeah, you yeah. finally get your hands on one that's oh, okay okay that's when things i got change. you i got you yeah, yeah. the All files right. are in the computer yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's like, in the you, other hard drive you, you smash the mac mm -hmm. zoolander <laughs> Uh, so I've been playing some Elden Ring. Um, What's that? I've never heard of it. Must um, be a small game. It's it's Dark Souls Four. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm kidding. You booted up. Heard of that game? <laughs> yeah. No, it's like when you know you boot it up, and there's there, there's a five minute cutscene about the game's lore, and it it feels the exact same as Dark Souls One, Two, and Three's <laughs> opening cutscenes. Um, also, if you're into drinking games, drink every time they sell it. say Elden Ring in that cutscene, because I swear to God, they say it like five, die? six times. Oh, you okay. might. Yeah, it might be your first death. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so there's the same like ar- cryptic, archaic opening cutscene that shows off the probably the big bosses you're gonna fight eventually, right? Like the the, the lords or whatever, right? Yeah, the um, Flegel Fleur, the the plagued. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of them is called Dung Eater, so that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, shit happens. Yeah, yeah. it does. Um, so there's th- that feels the same, and then when you load in and you're playing around, I-, I swear the movement, the animations, the sword swinging, all of it just feels like Dark Souls. It's Dark Souls Four, right? Mm-hmm. And then you jump, and that kind of changes everything a little bit, because then it starts feeling a little bit like Sekiro almost. Yeah. So there, it, it, it still overall feels a lot like a Dark Souls game, but just open world, which. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like they deliver on what the promise is or what your expectations are. And it's, I mean, it's pretty good. Would you say that it's the Dark Souls of Dark Souls? No, I would say it's the Breath of the Wild of Dark Souls of oh. Breath of the Wild games. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we're finally yeah, so, mixing the, so the comparisons. Is, is the Breath of the Wild comparison? Because I, I, so I haven't played it, but I read a lot of the reviews and stuff. Because like when something comes out and it reviews that well, like it's in the tiers of your Ocarina of Time, your Breath of the Wilds, like Half Life Two. All these are it's that tier of numerical value for its mm-hmm. reviews. Um, and that open world stuff is definitely the most talked about thing of how it's it rewards you just doing whatever you're doing. Yeah, and exploring. So I think there's. Um when you start the game you start it off in well like the early parts is like in this little dungeon like a crypt right and it's like easy mode like it's a tutorial dungeon basically where like every encounter like a window pops up saying like here's how you do this here's how you do that right um and then you finish that you leave and you just open a door and it is it does have that same energy as like the first few minutes of breath of the wild when like there's a cutscene (laughs) where you run up to the cliff edge and it just like pans around it has that same energy or like you just open it up to this huge landscape and you know you know you see that mountain you can climb it it's it's that right Mm. can you Um, i assume i mean everything Mm. in the game so far looks like yeah i'm gonna be able to go there eventually okay um how is because i mean uh dark souls is kind of famously obtuse Mm. with its storyline and with its directions which is why you know the ability to just kind of have a uh an intuitive and like linear dungeons and like linear linear um like structure to it has you know allowed it to be as vague as it is because it's like well there's only one hallway this is the way that i have to go mm-hmm. um how do you feel like does it still feel as vague are, are you getting more direction um So, you know that feeling when you're playing a game with a linear dungeon and it's like, then you're presented with two directions to go and you know one direction is the right way. So you're like, well, I have to explore the wrong way first because I want to see what's at the end of that. This game is that, but they present it in like eight directions. That's how I see it. So when you reach a bonfire, which look, it's a Souls game, they're called Grace. So you get to touch Grace, which everyone jokes is touch grass, which is great for the gamers. (laughs) Um, But you get to a bonfire And if it's like, I don't know how to describe it, like a main story bonfire or like a story important one, there is a ray of light from it that points in the direction of like, that's your next destination. Oh, Like if if you want to do the main story Hmm. stuff, like it just tells you go this way. Right. Um, But it's not like, it doesn't become like a waypoint or like a map marker. It's just like from the bonfire, you see a direction and like, that's it. That's all, you know. So like head West. Okay find out right so basically follow the light and then go die exactly so when you know okay that's the quote unquote um, shadows of the colossus then (laughs) yeah Uh, so when you know okay that's the quote unquote right direction to go you have 359 other degrees of direction to go that's the quote unquote wrong way that you want to explore like in the same way like when you're in a dungeon there's two directions that sort of thing um so i haven't really gone that far down the path of like the the main story or whatever you'd want to call it i just got far enough to like where i can level up and then from there i'm just kind of like going all over the map and just seeing what's around yeah and there's a lot of stuff where you're just like what the fuck's this the fuck's that what's happening right um and i i have this feeling of like there's probably so much stuff i've already missed but even though like i've explored a lot just because there seems it just it does have that feeling of there's always something behind every corner 
and you definitely haven't checked all your corners. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I'm not a I'm not a Souls person. I have accidentally beaten um, Bloodborne. Uh, in that I, I just stumbled I into it. Yeah, I well, it's the an final easy game, you know. Of, like... Well, no, because I was I was you know playing it and I beat the final boss of it, but. I, I didn't have any understanding or indication that that was the final boss. Uh, okay, <laughs> so all I, just, right. I, I beat the final boss. It was funny. I beat the final boss, and I'm like, you know, I'm still just, I'm really not having fun. I know that, like, there's more to do, but, like, I'm just going to put put it down here. And mm -hmm. it was only, like, a year and a half later that I was, like, looking up a list of bosses in Bloodborne. I'm like, oh, I, I finished the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um Sekiro I got like halfway through that fucking bull killed my will to live. Ah. So not even halfway through. That's probably like a quarter that's, of the way. <laughs> that's a pretty early game boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it just wasn't for me. Um but watching like hearing how you do have it's not like you're just continually like ramming against the wall in front of you cuz like in Sekiro it got to that bull fight and it's like, well, I've explored everywhere else I can explore. The only way forward is through this fucking bull. Mm. Um, and he's honestly not being very nice to me. Yeah. Um, he's kind of a hothead. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely, I just keep getting more and more FOMO hearing, uh, hearing people talking about Elden Ring and uh, that idea of being able to do the more open world exploration and having more avenues to level up, to get stronger, to... You know, I know that the game will never get quote unquote easy, um, but to for there to be more to do as opposed to just fight, die, repeat, fight, die, repeat, fight, die, repeat. Yeah. Yeah, there's so definitely a lot more that you can do with that. I think because like I ran into a part near the beginning ish where I was like stuck because I haven't played a Souls or Souls like game in a while. So I definitely was rusty and felt like, oh, man, I. I am so out of practice, right? <laughs> um, so I kept going after this guy. Like, again, it wasn't even a boss. It was just like, you know, a, just a bigger dude. Mm -hmm. um, I kept over and over again. After like 10 deaths, I finally got him. And then it hit me like, wait, I could just go that way. I could just go south. I just, yeah. <laughs> just do something else, right? Um, which is then what I did for a lot of like last night. And there I discovered like two more big dudes, like of the same big dude, but they were easier to fight because because they were like dragging a cart along and then when you kill them you get to the cart and then you can find treasure in there and it's like that's kind of neat where like you are rewarded you're still rewarded for not going down the you know whatever the mission critical path seems mm -hmm. to be and i explored fa far enough where i found another bonfire that pointed to a different critical path like it started pointing a totally opposite direction of what the other bonfires i found were pointing at which i'm assuming maybe is like they each point to a different lord or something because it seems to be setting up where like there's the four bosses you have to kill and then you kill them and you voltron them together or whatever like you know and like you play typical... your ocarina and then yeah. you go back in time three days and yeah typical dark soulsy you know kind, it, of, it stuff. kind of um you know where you have the games like you know like the the traditional open world games or just even rpgs like a Final Fantasy, where if you do all of the side quests and then come back to the main quest, it's like, oh, I'm kind of too powerful for this. Um, I feel like there'd be a huge incentive in Elden Ring to be like, okay, so like I'm actually going to go and do all the other shit so that I can come back and, and stand a chance. Mm -hmm. Like there's no no worry about power leveling. Yeah, I mean, you probably could because like I, I feel this even in like the original Dark Souls games. Uh, there's there is a point where if you if you grind enough, you know, if you kill enough boars in the forest, you'll eventually, <laughs> you know, reach reach a stat level where you're like, okay, all of this is trivial, or like mm -hmm. not quite trivial, but like easy I mean, enough. Yeah, you're, you're right. continually making yourself stronger. Right, um, and I feel that this game could probably <clears throat> totally do the same thing. You know, you kill enough kill enough zombies in the forest, and you could like just pump your endurance and your your vigor and your strength to like absurd levels, so that way. You can take a ton of hits. You do a ton of damage, like easy mode almost. For someone who who like has dabbled in souls, um, is maybe not the biggest fan, but enjoys open world games and RPGs and stuff. Do you think that this is a game that, um, you know that that a, a new player 
or someone who isn't as into Souls games would like? I think it depends on what about Souls you don't like. If if you're not a fan of, I mean, the general Souls combat, this is not for you. Like, okay. sorry, the 97 on Metacritic isn't going to sway it for you, I don't think. Like, if, if you <laughs> have a problem with the core combat identity of Dark Souls, this isn't it. Um, I think if, if your trouble with Dark Souls is more like, oh, it's too hard, I think this is the closest from soft will get to easing you in because i think there's a lot of like the random mob encounters <laughs> that feels like um easy like it, it I, I would say like they're easy you know like mm -hmm. you can take a lot of hits from them because they don't do that much damage to you and you start off the game with an absurd amount of stamina to where it is pretty forgiving like if you miss your strikes and you need to like bob and weave around like it's it gives you a nice playground to play with the Dark Souls formula without getting punished really hard. So it's the closest thing to easing you into that. But you are going to run into a point where you hit a pretty classic like Dark Souls wall where like yeah. that big mo like that Black Knight's hard to beat or like that boss is really strong, that sort of thing, where that's going to be the true test of whether you have the patience for a Dark Souls game. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... I, I so far I'm believing the hype uh, with with Elden Ring. I think it it's not going to sway you if you don't like Dark Souls, but if you do, this is probably so far one of the best opening experiences of a Dark Souls game I've felt in a while. Okay, and with that, it is downloading to my Xbox. You sold it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there okay. it is. The FOMO. We gave into the FOMO. <laughs> gave into that FOMO. Uh, I will yeah. not be. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you've got you've got a journey with Aloy to explore. I do have a journey with Aloy. Uh, yeah, you know, I like my stories told with uh, voice acting and quests and writing. I don't want to like figure it out by looking at the world. Hey, right? there, there's voice acting in this. Otten, there's Otten, there's there's some. Otten does not believe in getting good. Mm. I mean, here's the thing: I don't care about the story of Elden Ring at all. Like to me, that I could not give two shits about the story. In the same way, I don't care about the Dark Souls story. Uh, I think to me, it's more that mechanical challenge. And the exploration and the gameplay. Uh, okay. that's, so I was going to ask you about. about uh, that's one of the most interesting things I find about Dark Souls is the, the story. Well, uh, the way it tells the story. I think, I think and there's everybody's talked about it a million ways. I'm not. I'm not going to get into it too deeply. Um, but like, is there? I would imagine when it, with its open world, there's a lot more environmental storytelling in terms of you. Fo you find a scene or you find a location of an old whatever the fuck. And if you did look around enough or you did think about enough of what you were actually looking at, there's something to be found there, I would guess. Um, I think there is a bit of that. And if I cared enough, I could probably dig yeah, into yeah. it. Um, but I've never really connected with Dark Souls's um, environmental storytelling. Like, I know of its story because of, wiki of wikis. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I've read of it, but I haven't, quote unquote, experienced it. And I will probably do the same with Elden Ring. Like, I think there is more opportunity where you come across some thing. Like, I came across some dude in a throne in the middle of nowhere who was, like, petrified. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. There's probably, like, an item description about who, who this person is. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, or, like, um, there's a ton of, like, soldiers that's posted. The, that's the George R. R. Martin, you know, writing the Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. That's, like there's you know. a ton of soldiers posted around too and i'm like i'm sure there's some sort of explanation for like why they're here what they're trying to defend or like what yeah you know the the big civilization they're a part of or whatever and you know there there is a lot more of that to it or there's a ton of like obelisks with writing on it that you can read and eh, it's not for me but for those out there who are like yeah i love this environmental storytelling like that i think elden ring is going to scratch that okay so that that would be the most interesting part to me is that i always love how the there's a very a, a subtlety to it that's actually can be very profound in what mm -hmm. they show tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I, I think of you know the the two giant things who were like pulling the cart that I was talking about. I'm yeah. sure there's probably something about like what were they delivering or like you know what, what was their destination and like what's the big what's the story implication of that, right? Like the it's it's a world where it definitely feels like there's a lot under the surface if you want to look at it, but there's also just yeah. a lot on the surface too that's just like what's around that corner mm. what's in this cave does the sort of um overworld seem massive that's another thing i've heard is it just seems absurdly huge it's absurdly massive like they give okay. you a uh, one rectangle of it 
and you can zoom out to the point where that rectangle is like one ninth of your screen and i'm like so there's a bigger map than this probably <laughs> oh. like i'm still in the daunt of of oh, Elden Ring, okay. probably you oh, know lord yeah are you on pc or console oh that's the other thing that's a good question i'm on yeah, ps5 i'm looking at i was just i pulled up the steam page and it's mixed you know 67 yeah, percent because of the that. performance there's, issues yeah there's mm-hmm. been a lot of performance stuff on console though too hasn't there yeah like i've noticed a few things like it's i'm playing it on performance mode i don't think it's hitting 60 like there are times where you definitely feel yeah. frame drops a little it's still above 30 i think um but you definitely notice that stuff and there's a lot of pop in like there are times when you're like swinging the camera around and first you see the barren land and then a second later the grass pops on top of it you know mm-hmm. like it's that sort of thing so i haven't experienced anything game breaking or like crashes yet but there's definitely like some visual things where you're like oh that's yeah. a tiny bit distracting so it's a from software game i mean yeah. they're pretty well known for their <laughs> technical issues they have mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it it definitely is a little distracting, but I know FromSoft is trying to work on it, right? They said, like, they apologized for it. So I'm personally not one to be, like, so bothered by that where I'm like, I can't play this game. But I know yeah. some people out there are. So I, I, I mean, clearly, according to the Steam reviews, although I hear on well, PC, it's worse, Well, I think it's, PC, it's worse, I heard it's right? worse. It's yeah, really yeah, bad on PC, some bad yeah, stuff. from what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. So, well, I think I saw I was there was planning some... on picking it up this weekend, but I think I'm probably going to wait until the performance yeah. patch, even yes, with a yeah. high-end rig. There's some streamer or whatever playing. I saw some clip that was making the rounds, and mm. like it, he, it would just froze. It was Summit, I think. And then it, it was like ten seconds later. Then, then the animation would move a little more, and then it would freeze again. Uh-huh. It's like obviously he's running a rig and all this stuff that can handle whatever the fuck's going on. Um, right. So it's something with the game, um, and that's too bad. I mean, yeah, it, w- it was Summit. Uh, I was talking okay. to my buddy about that yesterday. Summit's one of the, probably one of the biggest streamers on Twitch, and he. We were talking about how he basically rage quit, not because he was getting his ass handed to him, but because of the performance. Yeah. Which, mm. it, I mean, on a high profile Twitch streamer like that, that yeah. that's kind of bad. I used to wonder about this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, do reviews ignore those too much? Mm. Don't know. Yeah, I, that's a I much bigger that. discussion for something else, but it just makes you think of. I guess. I guess I, I'd be curious where most reviewers played too. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Because I don't, I, I don't remember. Is. I don't remember who's reviewing it for us. Um, Will I don't remember him saying anything Will. about having issues. I um, I was chatting about it with a friend who, and he has a fifteen fifty, sixteen fifty. Yeah, I don't know. Um, one of those like that generation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't believe that he's been having issues. And I, you know, we were also yeah. looking at PC reviews online on like the performance threads and stuff. Um, I don't think it has anything looking... to do with like the power of your hardware. I don't think that's got to do with well, the performance. I... Well, I was I was seeing that people, or at least you know, from my small googling around, that some people with lower hardware were actually being fine with it. Oh, mm. really? Um, Interesting. Yeah. And I know that we've had that issue with whatever. What was that other game that the that the thirty series was like having stutter issues with? Was but... it Cyberpunk? No, uh, Cyberpunk has I don't think so. its own problems. There was a, <laughs> there was another PC game recently, high profile PC game. That I think I know what you're talking about. It was about. running fine on lower end hardware. Yeah, um, yeah but was, was having issues series. with the 30 series. Yeah, I think so, I know New World was having issues with the 30 series. Yes, yeah, that uh, was New World. Yeah, yeah, wasn't it like it was breaking, breaking 30s? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the menu, they didn't have a frame rate lock on the menu, so the menu would <laughs> ramp up to like 10,000 frames a second and brick the the video card. Yeah, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, only so on the I, 30 series. That's interesting. Like it was so yeah. strong, it broke itself. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bo Jackson did so. <laughs> for, my sports, <laughs> for my sports fans out there. There you go. This is a gaming podcast. <laughs> hey, sports are games. That's right. <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. The, the OG games. Jock. What a loser. <laughs> jock. <laughs> Show them in a locker. <laughs> Sounds like this guy definitely touches grass. <laughs> but it's AstroTurf, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah i think i think that does it for for this week's episode i'll, I'll probably talk more about elden ring next week e- either that or i'll maybe be able tri- to talk about elden ring next week yeah or or maybe triangle strategy or gran turismo 7 or shadow warrior 3 because there's so or many those games other coming two out games yeah, we have two. for embargo <laughs> dynasty warriors 4 dynasty warriors 4 we're going to talk about that next week for sure um 
But no, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And if you did, you know, feel free to give us a thumbs up or a like or uh, subscribe to the feed if you haven't already. Uh, and if you're watching us on YouTube or if you would just like to let us know your thoughts, you can leave a comment down below on our site or in the YouTube comments. Let us know what you're thinking of with Elden Ring, because I assume you might be playing it probably. You know, what's like the craziest thing you've found so far in the beginning? Let us know down below. Um, and if you haven't yet, you could also leave us a review on whatever podcast app you're listening to. That would be very helpful for us. Um, and if you want more of our content, we are at techraptor.net, where we always publish news, features, reviews every day of the week. Uh, and if you want us here on the pod, we will be back next Monday. See you then. A roadmap for achievements? Like, here are future achievements? Yeah, it's like you know saying are there missable ones yes or no are there things that you should be keeping an eye out for uh, okay. is there new game plus uh, this, i was that. thinking of like there's and then like going content. through being like this is what you need to be focusing on this upgrade will help you this get to this me. trophy yada yada i'm upset that that exists <laughs> have you that really never you? seen one of those I, I, I mean, I guess I you don't give a shit about achievements. couldn't give a fuck about achievements. It's the same. <laughs> I do not like, give a shit. Like, here, like, I've, I've played Elden Ring for six hours and haven't gotten one achievement, and I could not <laughs> care. Like, <laughs> How do you live your lives? I, I don't, I don't get Without a shit. just the sweet joy of an achievement popping up. I've never I'm happy, right? I'm happy without yeah. that. I, yeah, we well, don't fuck, need that that's for that's happiness. <laughs> yeah. I played a, I played Megalovania on the Tycho drum game and got an achievement and I was pretty happy. Nice. Just because you guys are wrong and achievements are, achievements when done right are really amazing because they can push players to play a game in a style that they might not normally play it in. <sighs> Sounds like you're trying to sell drugs to me. No. Now shut up and <laughs> see the, take see a hit the of this. world in a way that you've never seen it before. Yeah. Now shut up and subscribe to Game Pass. I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get me off yeah. this flying carpet. I don't want Chivo's trophies and outfits. Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the the three the three sixty had the the avatar outfits and stuff. I know that I um. Bro, I miss that shit. That was always funny. My 360 avatar was dressed up like one of the grunts from Final Fantasy 13 for years. <laughs> Gosh. I must, I must just, I am not the target person for most game companies when they think of shit. Most extra shit just doesn't. If they're targeting Ava a grumpy avatar old man, stuff. boom, they've got Otten. Avatar stuff, fuck off. Achievement stuff, Which, don't you can, give a You can shit. get a custom avatar emote. That is your Don't avatar care. sitting on a porch, shining his gun, telling people to stay the fuck off his lawn. I'd be down for that. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm with you, Auden. I'm not that big on the whole, like, oh, they sell the armor, but it's yeah. blue now. Well, I couldn't give a shit. Uh, the whole most ecosystem stuff or stuff that surrounds a game, I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, done done Couldn't wrong, care. it's trash. Um, I hate achievements that are done wrong. I hate online achievements. Um, yes. I just, don't think that like there should be a different way to reward multiplayer play um but just like that that pushing you to play something differently like oh in halo yeah you can beat the game beat a level fast beat a level on a higher difficulty beat a level with all skulls on carry a certain item through the entire game never get in a vehicle once bro that Stuff fucking like that. gnome achievement in left for dead yeah yeah the second one Stuff oh like that God. is cool because it it's you know, somewhat superficially, like, adds replayability, adds longevity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's cool. The stuff, like, kill 10,000 enemies is just like, why? Well, yeah. do you remember the Gears 1 achievement that was kill 10,000 people in multiplayer? Yeah. That was I a mean, legitimate... I was like... And I mean, the, I've played that game religiously and did the, not ever get to that. I think the Doom BFG edition on the 360 has an achievement for being number one on the multiplayer leaderboards. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, how the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You gotta grind Get it good, out. man. Yeah. Get good. I don't know. I mean, I do, I get where you're coming from. Or I do think it's cool that that 
that influences people to like play the game differently. I guess for me, I just don't need that for most games. Yeah, like, and if unless you don't I'm, like, need to, that's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, like, if it's a game I really, really like, I don't know, maybe I would, but even God of War 2018, I haven't gotten all the achievements. I'm like two trophies away from platinuming it, and I'm just like, yeah, okay. I'm good. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Does that just give you anxiety? I have yeah. a bunch of games just, that are like that. It's just sitting there taunting you. Uh, no, it, that's the beauty of it. No, it that's, doesn't that's, taunt me. That's all in your head, right? That's yeah. not real. That's all that's you. That's a voice in your head. You save your fruit. You save yourself. Yeah. Unlock me, Rutledge. <laughs> Rutledge, no. you're failing if you're not unlocking me. Oh, yeah. mm, you're not a I real fan unless unlocked. you platinum. Not a real Save fan me. unless you platinum or 100% that bitch. Like mm-hmm. I did with Biomutant. Yeah. Oh, finish mm. me. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. I like that I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to flip that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that needs to be like, Man. you got a text message. <laughs> you know? Like, fin- 